Now that we've talked about machine learning, we can dive into what language modeling is. ChatGPT is a language model. What ChatGPT does is it produces a sequence of words given some input, and it does this by generating one word at a time. This is a, this is a task that we need machine learning for. And to explain this task a little bit more, I think it makes sense to compare it to predictive text on your phone. If you type in a few words, your phone keyboard might suggest some things that might come next as a way of trying to help you out. This is actually the same thing as what ChatGPT is doing, just much more primitive. It's, it has a sequence of words that it's seen so far, which we call the context, and it's trying to predict what comes next. The really kind of key and interesting thing about this problem is that it's not like a simple prediction problem because you never know exactly what's going to come next. The phone doesn't actually know what I'm going to say. It's instead going to try to make its best guess and try to give me a few useful options. Now, partially because there's no right answer and it relies on being able to make a guess, we're going to need machine learning for this. We need to be able to look at a lot of data, like your phone looks at everything that you've typed so far and says, hey, what is this person likely to say next? That's an idea for machine learning. In order to understand this a little bit more, I want us to think about what prediction of the next word in a particular context looks like. Suppose we have the context, I want to blank, and we're trying to think about what word might come next. There are a lot of words that could come next. I want you to think about the words that could come next and try to identify something that these have in common. I'm going to stop here for a second. You can pause the video and work on this. OK, let's take a look at some possibilities that might come next. So what are things that we might want to do? Well, swim, eat, play, stuff like that. These are all verbs you're much more likely to get a verb here than something like a noun. Like, I want to food is not a grammatical sentence. There are also verbs that are possible, like I want to shovel, but those are somehow less likely. So the interesting thing about this task is it's not just about saying what makes a legal English sentence, but Instead, it's saying what is actually likely for someone to say next. And that really requires understanding what people want to do and maybe even what this particular person wants to do. So this is a case where there's lots of options that can come next. I have another thing that I want you to think about, which is try to think of a context. So now you're trying to come up with the initial set of words where the next word has to be something in particular. I'll give you a hint, which is that rather than just starting with three vague words, you're probably going to need a context that's a lot more specific. I'm going to pause here again, and you can think about this. All right, so the kind of thing that often is very constraining in terms of what comes next are factual queries. If we say the capital of Nebraska is blank, that's really asking in some sense for a particular fact. It's asking for a particular city, which in this case would be Lincoln. And it really, you know, you could imagine that someone might be confused about the capital of Nebraska and give a different answer. But Really, if we're thinking about the text that we might see in something like a textbook, there is really one right answer here, but it might be hard to predict. Another example of this is the third president of the United States was blank. Once again, this might be uh, an example where you, you, know, you think that there's only one option. Uh, in fact, there's a few, right? We could say Thomas Jefferson. We could just go right with Jefferson. We could say one of the founding fathers, or uh, you know, we could say a slave owner. Right, So there's a few different ways of continuing this. But in any case, it's still much less open-ended than what we saw to start with. I think what these examples illustrate is that predicting text is something very powerful. We can ask a system that can predict text questions, right? What started the American Revolution? And now the answer here, we can think about what the next word is going to be. Maybe it's the, and then, but we can keep going, right? 
we can generate more words and that's going to ideally give us an answer to this question. If our predictive text is very, very good, it's going to be able to tell us, okay, give me an answer that looks like an answer to this question, right? Or once upon a time, there was a blank. If we keep predicting the next word, eventually we can get an entire story here. Or we can even do the translation task that we had before. The translation of I'd like the Caesar salad, please, into Spanish is blank. The most likely next words here somehow should be that translation into Spanish. This is how ChatGPT works. It's a supercharged language model that's very good at predicting the next word. And so even though that's the only thing that it can do, it has much more diverse capabilities than these past systems like Google Translate. And this is one of the biggest ideas in the field of natural language processing in the last decade, that this kind of language modeling is really a universal interface to a lot of different problems. So now that we've seen the kind of reason that we want to build language models, next we're gonna talk about actually how we do it, how we represent this uh, uncertainty over possible next words. That's the end of this segment.